All right, well, as previously mentioned, my name is Molly McCormick, and I'm the uh, biomechanical engineer for Orbital Outfitters. Um, and I'm going to be going over um, some spacesuit <laughs> applications that we anticipate coming up, uh, hopefully sooner rather than later, and how you design for them. Intervehicular operations, that's the one that we already have going on. Orbital labor, hopefully that will be coming soon. Surface exploration, probably a little bit further out there. Space diving, also coming soon. Um, you always have to provide pressure and you have to allow for mobility within that. So you'll notice that there are a whole bunch of variable environmental dangers. Some of them are very, very self-explanatory, like temperature. Okay, obviously there's going to be a big temperature drop out there. There's going to be toxic chemical exposure, puncture and abrasion. Some of them are a little bit less obvious. Regolith, sharp. Sharp and gets everywhere. Um, micrometeoroids and orbital debris. Water, that's not water like, oh no, I got some water on me. That's like you're landing in the ocean. That's a major concern because we tend to sink. Um, radiation, also, uh, you know, concern, sunlight. If you're trying to see what you're doing, if that's critical, if that's in your way, that's a problem. Noise, also not something you would normally consider to be a major uh, challenge, but when you're launching on the top of a rocket, it's a problem. Um, so normally, so for the intravehicular suit, it's only an emergency item. You really don't want to have to use it. But when you do, you have a very large number of things that you're actually having to worry about. Because when, that, that, uh, when your vehicle doesn't protect you, you're in trouble. Um, fortunately, all you have to bring with you is uh, a bailout bottle, basically. But when you actually operate on, what you actually operate on is just, there's a huge amount of variety there. The vehicle is your operating environment. Each one is different, and they require vastly different interconnects and um, ergonomic interfaces. Lest you think that this is sort of a boxers versus briefs type problem, I assure you, it's not. This is actually pulled from one of our proposals. That's how you connect to a spacecraft in a spacesuit. So they're all very, very different from each other. Orbital labor, uh, construction, repair, refurb, and reclamation. This is something that we covered actually upstairs in one of our talks today. No matter what it is you're doing, you're going to have to use your hands a lot. They're all going to require a high degree of manual dexterity. Um, and you're going to have to attach a hook. You're going to have to attach to it or whatever it is uh, really well. Fortunately, okay, so you've got the new dangers here of radiation and sunlight, everything else, you know, chemicals, depending on what it is you're working on. You've now got micrometeoroids. You're going to have to bring your tools. You have to bring water and food as well. And the major challenge being that dexterity, you have to have gloves that really work well. This is Peter Homer's uh, Centennial Challenge winning glove. Um, some of the gloves that NASA uses right now, you can actually lose your fingernails on them because of the way the um, pressure cuts off um, circulation. Surface exploration does not include uh, asteroids because you can't walk on it. So I have sort of neatly put that aside. Um, this is when you are perambulating under gravitational conditions because that will severely affect how you're walking. So you're going to need not only manual dexterity, but the ability to walk without you know, panting, oh my god, it's so heavy, as you go along. Um, you need to look at what you're doing. Um, you're now getting that regolith challenge in there, and you're carrying a lot of equipment, but you're probably going to have a buggy with you to do it. Regolith, in addition to being like as fine as flour, is also as sharp as, as glass, really. And um, it can get in the mechanics of things and um, not gum them up so much as lock them up. Space diving, everyone's favorite. This is stuff we want to be diving from. This is the current record-holding altitude. So we've got a little ways to go. And where you're diving and why you're diving are different. So if you're like, if this is a bailout suit, everything is a problem. And I, I you know, nature just hates you at this point. Something's gone horribly wrong. You have to bring oxygen, a lot of oxygen. That's a long trip, actually. If you're bailing out of the International Space Station, it could take you days to reach Earth. You're going to need a, um, a re-entry shield. You're going to need a parachute. And really, you're not trying to do anything when you're up there. You're trying to live. <laughs> that's all that's going on. Um, 
But if you're not doing an emergency dive, if you're if you're intentionally diving out of something, it's going to be a lot lower. So you lose a lot of the concerns. You know, you know where you're landing. You're not going to land in the water. You just have to bring just you know barely enough uh, oxygen with you, um, and you're going to have to bring a parachute with you. And also, I'm not sure how well that was showing up, but we're con considering some sort of. Um, vacuum stabilization device, which can be very, very tricky to, to implement when you also have a parachute and any other sensors taking up the same real estate. Um, if anybody has any other questions, I mean, I know I threw a lot at you there. This is my first time doing it at night, so. Um, T minus five. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Woo!